Just shut up. God, what is it you want me to do? And don't listen to your own self. God, what do you want me to do? Enemy on this side. God, what is it you want me to do? And all of a sudden, this voice says, even your own, don't mean a thing. And it's God what he's saying. But there's Jesus here. Verse 5 of chapter 6 in John. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now, why would God say that? That he needed to buy bread. He could change the stones into bread. <laughs> but he did it on the behalf of Philip. A lot of times God will ask you a question. He asks, he'll ask, I mean, if he's doing it with me, the fellowship I have with him, he's going to do it with you. He's going to ask you questions. He's not going to use somebody else to ask you. He'll ask you as he talks to you partially. He talks to you on a personal basis, one-on-one. -on -one. And that, that fellowship, that's what you need, that relationship. You've got to have that and get an understanding that he does talk to you and you do talk back. And not talk back in rebellion, but answer him back. Talk back and forth. There's a conversation from you and God, Jesus. And when you can understand this, this, these things are the things that are possible, these things that are, are the miracles, that's a miracle that we can communicate with God and he talks with us one-on-one. -on -one. And there's millions of people and he knows my name, he knows where I live. You know, he, he, even the little things that I want, he just all of a sudden they appear. No, that's God working and moving in our life. I mean, he is so abundant, but he's so intricate. You know, make, he formed a big, huge elephant, but yet he made a little, tiny, little mosquito. Just every little hair. I mean, when you look at dogs, little hairs, all these, I mean, just all these things. He's so intricate. He's so intricate in your life that every little thing about you, he wants to fix and change. And here he was saying this to Philip, and it tells you in the next verse, verse 6, and this he said to prove him. He was doing something else. He was bringing him to another level to show him that this might be your natural way of thinking, but I'll show you how this is going to be done, and I'll show you how you need to be. And he's showing us. For he himself knew. He knows what we're going to do next. He knows what you're thinking. That's why even Sarah laughed when she's, you know, he told him that she was going to bear a child. <laughs> you laughed. No, I did. Yes, she did. He was saying, well, whoops. Me too. But, oh, you're right. And, I mean, the Lord spoke to me a lot of times, and I laugh. I said, you just laughing? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll say, yeah, because you know you did. Yes, I did. Get back and forth. But it's a comical thing with God. It's a comical thing with him. Verse 7. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread. Now, what I was saying about you need a numbers book, 200 means insufficiency insufficiency I was like God why would you put 200 in there insufficiency and you think about Achan he stole 200 shekels insufficiency he thought he you know his lust drew him to think that that would be security for him it wasn't it was insufficient it was in, insufficient to save his soul. He lost soul his whole entire household. There's an insufficiency in the human, in our monies, and the way we exchange. But in God, the exchange of the kingdom of God, there is no insufficiency because he's the all-sufficient one. And as we tap into the principles and the things in God through tithes, offerings, and just giving, flat out being a giver, Everything you have is God's anyway. So why would you think to hold something back from somebody else? You know, we want to justify it. We want to say, well, they didn't do this and they need to do that. We want to always be a parent to people because we train up our children. Okay, if you're good today, you'll get this. You know, we think God's the same way. Oh, Elaine, you've been good today. You're going to get that. No, he is all about grace and mercy and love. And he knows what you need and he will hold back some things until he changes things in us and arranges it and he fixes it and he waits till that time because you know what he knows he knows that we're stallions because we're running a race and that we're winners because he already fixed us to be winners and if he doesn't hold us back in some things we'll jump ahead and they'll and we'll use the gifts we'll use the power and then they'll try to crown us king or queen 
He's not going to have that. He didn't do it with Jesus. He did not do, do it like that. He did it because he was transforming people along and transforming us too at the same time. So you say, why? Don't ask why anymore. You know there's a purpose in where you're at, what you're doing, what you're going through. And all, it, just fellowship, 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 fellowship. That's the word. Fellowship with the Lord daily, constantly. Talk to him more than you talk to people around you. And you know what? If you'll talk to him more, you won't talk to the people around you like you have been. And I won't either. Because, you know, i got a little attitude, too. I'm, I'm, oh, oh, wait a second. Now. Oh, wait a minute now. Oh, you shouldn't. Don't go there, you know. Oh, we, we're calling and all like that. Oh, talk to the hand. And then we'll talk to other people. Right behind their back. And they'll say, hi, how you doing? You know, we're so good at this. I mean, it's ridiculous. But, you know, that's a liar. That's another part of the liar strand, you know. We're just so good at, hi, how you doing? I wish that. I said, ah. You know, behind that face is this, mm. But God's pulling out the tears. Not to fear, not to worry, because it is really funny, but it's ridiculous because God doesn't want that because that's a betrayal thing. You know, Judas was right there sitting. He said, put this up in. There's somebody here and they were saying, is it me, is it me? They were saying it's me because they knew they were the same way. They were the exact same way. They had it in them to do it. But see, he was a son of tradition. It was for him to do it because that's the way it was and is. There's some people that are formed to be that way. Okay, so we're finding out there's an insufficiency in God to show you that insufficiency is natural. It's the God of this world. But in our God, there is no insufficiency. He is the all-sufficient one. Anytime you need something, you ask him. Why go without? Why suffer? You know, a lot of people think, uh, you know, back in the old days, they... They didn't have much. They come out of the uh, dispensation where God was doing some different things in them. And they had to live hard and, you know, they had less than we did. They did the same thing we're doing with our kids. We wanted them to have more. They wanted us to have more. But whatever we had, you know, and we were talking about yesterday how you ate was on your plate. If you didn't throw it away, you wouldn't get it anymore. Or, you know, the whole process. But God says that that mindset cannot be carried on into a spiritual realm because it would abort some things in other people's lives because he's the all-sufficient one and anytime you need something you know they've made sacrifices for the children so they could have we don't have to sacrifice anymore he wants to give he wants you to give offerings unto God because as you give it shall be given unto you and it, and it's not about the, the portions because even the widow with the two mites, she gave all her living, you know. And meaning that, God, you are my all-sufficiency. And anything I have is worth putting in there just to show you how much I love you and how much I really do trust you. Because it doesn't matter. He's the all-sufficient one. We don't want to hold on or hold back and think that that's got to do something for us. It, it, it like, giving us a, it's a super, superficial power. You know, we want the supernatural power that shows that, Yes, I'm going to prove. You know, he was, he was proving to Philip who he was. But we want to prove to God what we will do because he asked us to do it. He doesn't force us to do it. He wants us to show our love. You know, like the pastor was saying yesterday, how when, when they got those things, they brought it to the priest. They brought it to the priest of the house. And Jesus is the high priest of this house. And then he has stewards over the work because there was about to be a great increase. And with that increase, he's got men and women that are trusted. They're trustworthy. They're the stewards over the natural, so he's making them stewards over the supernatural. And it has come with a price that they've paid. And God saw fit now to bring forth in their lives those things and ours too. Because when it runs down, the beard of the head, it runs down on you too. And I'm glad my because we're part of that body. 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Or say, one of the disciples, Andrew Simon's Peter brother, said unto him, There's a lad here which hath five, five is in him for grace, barley loaves, 
and